Oh, before we, one more thing. Tim and Evelyn are not here tonight. We don't see Tim and Evelyn much in the evening services going forward. He just can't drive. Right. It's so it's so dark and everything. Mm -hmm. And so he mentioned that to me on Sunday. He's not happy about that. But there's just not much he can do uh, because of this. So y'all pray for him. That's, that's very difficult on him and everything. Good evening. I'm glad to be back. You guys uh, allowed me back. I just want to clear up and make sure I clear up one thing that I said this morning. I hope you had good communication and talk about the message that we did all the time. But there's one thing, you know, as we talked about having faith, the first thing you've got to do increasing our faith is for, for us to forgive. Remember, forgiveness is breaking loose from the person that you have an all against as well. Now, there's some things on, on both sides that the person needs to do. But for you, you forgive them. Yes, the consequences to their actions. Remember the thief on the cross. All you got to do, yes, God forgave you. But he didn't say, now, okay, now, I'll let you down. You will get cleaned up and everything. But uh, the bottom line is, yes, there is forgiveness. There are consequences. Sometimes that might be broken trust or whatever. And you say anything about trusting them. Sometimes when that's broken, it takes a lot more. But there again, I just hope that clears things up if anyone had any questions or uh, concerns on Thank you, God, for the message this morning. I'm giving him the glory. Tonight, I want to talk about Thanksgiving's empty chair. You know, we're getting ready to come into Thanksgiving. Uh, every day should really be a day of Thanksgiving. Because, number one, when I put my feet on the floor, I am just thankful they're still there. After all these years and all the things that they have gone and all the ground that they have marched over, or walked over, or ran over. God is still allowing me to be here. Uh, I'm glad to be here this morning. I want to talk to you from a very familiar passage of scripture this morning, or this evening, out of Luke chapter 15, verses 25 and 32. I'm going to concentrate on the prodigal son brother. Before we go there tonight, I want to read this to you, kind of a little funny, but it talks about ingratitude. A woman was visiting some people who lived on the farm, and she noticed a pig limping in the backyard with a wooden leg. She asked the farmer, what happened to the pig? The farmer said, oh, Betsy is a wonderful pig. One night, the house caught on fire, and she honked so loud, she woke us up, and we got the fire truck in time to save the house. The woman said, that's really something. The farmer continued, ah, that's not all. One day, my youngest fell in the pond, and Bessie honked so loud that she got our attention, and we were able to pull my daughter out of the pond in time. The woman said, wow, that's really amazing. But I still don't understand why the pig has a wooden leg? The farmer says, well, when you have a pig that special, you don't want to eat him all at once. Gratitude <laughs> 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 right. didn't run very far <laughs> for the three-legged pig, <laughs> the three-legged hero. Oh, <laughs> My question to you tonight, <laughs> one time, we'll save a little bit, you know, we might need him again down the road. <laughs> you know, gratitude didn't run very deep for the three-legged hero, and, and when it comes to being thankful, it is also, it doesn't run very deep in our lives as well. You know, it's a cute little story, but it, it can easily run out. Just how deep does your gratitude run for God? You know, good question to ask yourself. Now, as we look a little bit into this tonight, we look at the prodigal son's brother. We know on, you know, on a day where there should have been great Thanksgiving, and surprisingly, every chair was filled except one. It was the chair right next to the robe-covered prodigal. It belonged to the elder brother. This good boy who minded his own business, lived by the rules, you know, stayed out of trouble, was coming home after a hard day out doing his chores. And we know the story. 
Uh, he heard the commotion, but he was unaware. Let's look at our scripture starting with chapter 15 of Luke, just 25 through 32. Now his eldest son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music. I like the way they write this, because music will make you sick, especially when it's the wrong sick music. And I'm not saying this was, but I just like the way they write this. And dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come. And thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in therefore. Came his father out, and entreated him. And he answered, answering, said to his father, Lo, these my, uh, many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment, and yet Thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son, boy, that's some hard words to that man. What about your brother, son? No, it's your son now. You know, that's what kids are sometimes. Uh, was come, which have devoured thy living with harlots. Thou hast killed for him the fat cat. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. And all that I have is done. It was me. We should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. So put your salvation in there. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your precious word. Lord, help us to not have an empty seat in our heart concerning thanksgiving. You have been merciful to us yet again, and again and again. And so, Lord, help us to be thankful, to enter into your court, thanksgiving in our heart. Lord, we just ask this now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, we see here this son coming and heard all this racket. Now, a lot has been said about the prodigal son. But boy, we had some church going home, brother. He started. <laughs> when we get to a preacher together, man, I tell you, I didn't think it'd keep no Cadillac on the road. I asked the Honda, God. And, but the point is, is this, is that, listen, we always talk about the young son. But I'm going to tell you like it is. I'd much rather deal with the young son who was brash, he was spoiled, rotten, but he was right up front. Yeah. Versus Mr. Goody Two Shoes, who did everything by the book, but his heart was far from it. You see, there's people like that. Oh yeah, I've done this and I've done that, but he wasn't willing. The Bible tells us if you be willing and obedient, Again, you know, that verse is coming from Isaiah 119. If you be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Now, there's so much you can say there. The thing was, a lot of times, you can ask your children to do something. And they'll do it. But they're rebelling in their heart. I'll do it. But I'm not wanting to do it. And you ever notice when God asked his son to do something, he didn't have to ask him twice. He just asked him one time. You know, the thing is, is this, young people, you see, you can murmur under your breath. But God hears every word you say. Amen. He knows every thought we have. Well, there's a lot of people just like this elder son. You see, many kids are obedient, but not willing. Uh, like I said, I'll do it. Yes, Dad. <laughs> Mudley <laughs> comes to mind. You know, I tell him, I tell him, I tell him, I tell him, hey, now Mudley was an old dog that was always mumbling, and he was with Dick Dastrophy, and ever, something never, never worked out. And he, <laughs> <you know? laughs> and he always did that, you know. 
And uh, I did that at work all the time. And I'm like, what you do? I did a deal up to that machine. And, you know, I you know, his boss would tell him to do something, he didn't want to do it. But again, listen, you would have thought the news that this young man was coming home would have been good news. You see, they didn't have the internet then. They didn't have, you know, the telephone or anything like that. As far as he knew, he was never going to see his brother again. You know, he was good as dead. <coughs> Come to think of it, the fact that his younger sibling even uh, had the nerve to come back to, to muster up some deeply negative feelings again, it, it just started all over again. Maybe he was sad at first when his brother took off. Maybe he sat around and helped his dad talk bad about him. I can't believe he did that. You know, I just can't see it happening. But deep down inside, he was going, yeah. you know, because you know what? He wanted it all. But basically, the prodigal told his dad he wanted his inheritance. That was good as being dead, as far as that young man said. While he ran off to live reckless and irresponsibly, who bared the brunt of the responsibility? but the big brother. How could dad even consider throwing a party for him? Oh, he done put you through. Maybe you got some children. Maybe you've been that child. All that you done put your parents through. And yet, aren't you glad? Because God says this to me. All that I put you through, Lord, you still love me. The Bible says nothing can separate us from his love. Neither death, nor height, or anything. Somebody might need to hear that tonight. Because you know, one of these times, Satan always tries to tell you, God will never love you again. That's so wrong. That's just wrong. I'm glad that it's not based on what I did. I'm not sitting here saying, go out and try. Go out and, and grieve the Holy Spirit. No. But I'm sitting here glad to know that just like this father, which is an indication of our heavenly father, when we come back to him, he's ready to kill. Not the fatty cat. Amen? He's not going to do it over and over again. But he killed him for us, allowed him down the cross. For our sin. But again, here's this young man. Think about it. We act just like this son that I just was talking about. The Lord still loves us. All have what? Sin. And come short of the glory of God. But look at me. You know, not to mention that dad was doing this. But how in the world you let him have one step back on your property? Wait a minute. It's not my property. It all belongs to God. You know, it's a story how families can get torn apart by things. And I, 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 can, I know that because Satan's always after your family. Let me just tell you something. There's not, he don't want your car and he don't want your this. He wants your family. And, and he'll do anything to separate, to, to, to divide, to, to destroy. Sometimes things come into play. You know, this, this son, he, he really was. He was a mess. I'm talking about the eldest son. Oh, yeah, the other one went out and wasted things. But you know what? He came to his senses in the home pit. But how could? It was more than this young man could stand. You know, he'd been out working all day. And you know it was hungry. You know, my brother and I, we, we had this thing. He, he know about them saying love, crying in the back and all that stuff. You spend a lot of part of your day bent over just like this right here, collecting leaves. Some of y'all smoke them and all that stuff after they didn't shrivel up. And you, I'm going to tell you, it's hard, it's hot, it's snaky. I hate snakes. We always say it, boy. If it ain't as hard as crying about it, it ain't hard. But 
But boy, when you walked in that field, I'm telling you, man, we didn't have plates, we had platters. I mean, you just engulfed the food because you, I mean, you went right out and it was all gone. You know, working in 95 degree weather with 90 or better percent humidity, I'm talking about really hard work. This young man had been out in the fields, he was working. If you go out and take the trash out these days, they go, Dad, I'm hungry. You just took out the trash, come on. You know, feed me. But I'm sitting here saying to you, is that here's a picture of a young man who was doing supposedly what he what was doing right. Finding his own business. But Bellard, when he heard that that brother was home, he got mad. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you, my brother went into service before I did. Boy, whenever we found out Billy was coming home, man, I got happy. Because I, I knew I was going to get something. I don't know what it was. You know, I'd get his field jacket or shirt or whatever, you know. It was something I wanted, you know. But I got happy. You know, I hadn't seen him in a while. And I can remember when he would call and he was in Korea and he'd be on shortwave radio. And every time he said a word to him, hi, how you doing? Over. And he'd say something else over and, you know, switching back and forth. It was kind of a boy conversation. You had an over in there. But, you know, that was the way it was. But this wasn't the case with this young man. Maybe you can relate to that. He, again, uh, it was repulsive to him, and he wanted no part of this unscheduled party. He refused to go in the house to welcome back his brother. No forgetting, and certainly no forgiving, would come from him. Listen, like I said, I understand there's consequences. For our action. But in so many ways, this son, like I said, was worse than the young. But we can behave the same way. You see, here was a situation where someone turned their life around. And people should have been happy about it. You know, they were. I see this a lot. Pastor tell you, you know, I, oh, I see this a lot, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm not picking on the wives, but sometimes the wives are praying for their husband to get right, to turn from his wicked ways. And then he turned, and then the other one gets mad. I've seen it happen. I'm not making this up. You'd think they'd be overjoyed. My husband once was dead, but now he's found. He once was lost, now he's found. The same thing with this young man. They didn't think they'd ever see him again. But we got to learn to forgive, not don't, don't, don't forget. And again, yes, you know, he wasn't going to get another inheritance. God, you know, he did put a ring on his finger. He didn't go back to him and say, well, you know what? What I got left is yours. No, that was gone. You see? And then something happened. Not sure if the father saw his son talking with some of the uh, uh, some of the, the servants or anything of that sort. The father steps out to urge his older son to join him at the table. The pleading must have been just too much for this son to bear. You know, just like a dam that's over, overburdened with water that's getting ready to break, this older son, he breaks loose with great emotion all the feelings that he had held back. But you know what? <coughs> this had been brewing for a long time. They always used to say, Mama used to say it too, get this in you. Listen. Maybe you've been holding back, especially with siblings. Maybe there's rivalry. And you know, it doesn't just start with kids. It goes into adulthood sometimes. And you know what? A lot of tables are empty because I just can't, I can't get through that. You just don't know what he did. Well, let me tell you something. You don't know what you're going to do. You think you've done it all. You say, oh, God, I, 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 I'm in my right mind. You might not be in your right mind in the next minute. Yeah, they did wrong. I'm not, I'm not coloring that. But you know what you can do wrong too? 
telling you. And I'm telling you, remember I said it's impossible, it's, a, it's hard for us to do that and forgive that. But anyway, so we see here, out comes a resentment toward Daddy for not giving him such treatment. How thankful was he? Wait a minute, you live in rent free. And you know, you're not being charged. You know, you're living on my phone. You know, we're living on God's earth. He's not charging us. Now, maybe you might be paying something, but listen, it's all his. And uh, how dare us be unthankful? Listen, three children were killed in Indiana, I think, were standing at the bus stop this week, and a car, a truck came through and wiped them all out. Folks, we need to learn to be thankful. Yes, I don't like what's happening. You know what? God's too good to All the time. But yet, you know what? This young man was just waiting for the change. You know, he was embittered by his brother's unbridled passions and, and wasted living. He was frustrated that he would again have to share the farm with his brother. Ooh, here comes the real ones now. The last thing in the world he wanted to do was have to go to a party <coughs> and act like he was happy. Here's the underlying question tonight. Here's a controlling question for all of us. Think of this son. Think of yourself. How can a blessed person become so extremely ungrateful? There's not a person here that's not highly blessed. Highly. If anyone should have been absolutely content. Again, shouldn't it have been that old brother? But amazingly, doing all the right things, possessing the benefits he, he, was, he was entitled to of the, of the estate living, are not guarantees of a grateful heart. I mean, surely his dad had talked to him, well, son, you all I got left? One day I'm going to leave. That's all you want. How can a blessed person become so extremely ungrateful? How can you and I become so extremely ungrateful? Man, man, if you talk, I told you, I couldn't bother sleep. I managed to eat, but I'm telling you, this is hard because it speaks of us sometimes. Amen. I know I'm talking to you. Look at the interchange between the father and the elder brother. When we look at that, we discover some things that point to a heart plagued with thanklessness. Maybe you might see yourself in some of this. This young man was performance driven. If, if I do this, if I do that, I'm sure to get this fun family phone. He wasn't love driven. Aren't you glad, glad God is love driven? No, he was thinking, I just got to do this. You know, it reminds me, of, ever seen an animal about to die? Now, I'm not saying his dad was about to die, but obviously he may be getting up there in years, and you look up, boy, you see them boys circling. Yeah. He's going to die. You know, we always used to go, ah, ah, ah. You know, he's just circling around. Yeah, he's going ready to drop, and we're going to feast on this. That's what that boy's heart was thinking. Yeah, just a little bit longer, and it's all mine. Listen, you can't keep nothing. You know, yes, it's yours for a while. And you should be good stewards of it. But I'm going to tell you right now, you don't need that kind. Don't sit around young people. You know, here you go. And this is what I see. You know, and I'll get to that point. But don't, don't think that because your parents, what they had worked for, they work for. If they want to leave it to you, then praise the Lord. If they don't, praise the Lord too. Don't be walking around saying, man, I just can't wait. The old man, you know, maybe some of my kids are, well, you know, it's like, you know, I, I ain't even. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, he's, he's on the edge. 
He got one foot in the grave and the other on banana peel, and he's just snipping on off. And we gonna we gonna swoop in. Not so. <laughs> Listen, but that's the mindset this day. Of uh, this this older brother was marking time, counting the days when he would inherit the farm until the old man died. This older brother, he was also tracking behavior. You see, he, he based his justification for cutting loose and all that on the fact that he had never acted like his younger brother. He didn't realize he was acting worse. I never done that. You know, it gets me sometimes. Uh, sometimes, you know, you can always go to Walmart and there's always a child acting a little bit unruly. Oh, and you know, sometimes you see these disgusts on these older kids. And I even heard them go, I never acted like that. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> you know, that wasn't me. <laughs> oh, but I, I, I wish Harold was, was here tonight. But Rachel was here. I used to get down on one knee, and I'd get one arm, and I'd put a little pressure on it. And there was always a bad thing. You don't want to act like that. You know that. I don't know what else we'll do, but I don't want to act like that. You know, that's what they would say. You know, and so what am I saying is, I ain't never caused you no problem. I've always been the good child. Ah, ah, ah. You know, the older brother was tracking behavior. And we do this as well. You know what? I go to church. I pay my tithes. Thank you. And let me let me just clear up one thing in case somebody tithes are not for the pastor. Amen. The tithes is to bring the goods into the storehouse. That was God's way of bailing. There was no uh, social benefits as far as welfare and all that. God said, "Let there be meat in my house." So sometimes people miss the screw. It's the pastor now. The tithes are not for him. But I just want to throw that out there. Pastor, that's going to cost a little bit. <laughs> I didn't say it wasn't for the social pastor. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I pay my tithes. I'm here every time the door opens. But your heart ain't right. Because you're sitting there, check, check. No, I'm here because I love God. And you know what? I want to be in the presence of the Lord. And he's been so good to me. And you know what? There's nothing I can give. You never go down and give God. It doesn't matter who you are. But no, you know what? Here I done been all this. And you know what the Lord's going to say? Because their heart ain't right. You know, it's just like it says in Matthew chapter 7. No, we cast out devils in your name. And we did all these things. The Lord said, I believe the pastor said, I never knew you. I didn't even think about you. Why? Because your heart ain't right. All you were thinking about is being driven to say, well, you know what, I go to church because my, you know, you remember, now I'm telling my age, there used to be those old tried in gum commercials, and the one thing the boy said, it's the only gum my mother would let me chew. Because if she wouldn't let me chew it, I'd chew something else. Listen, folk, people the same way. You know, I do this because I live at home. But my heart is far from that. You know, I, I can go through the motions, and that's what this young man was doing. And then, after all that, look down here, he says, you know, he loved these many years. Well, I served thee. Boy, I didn't want to. It's, not, it's just right here. Neither transgress. You know what transgress? You know, transgress is when you know to do right, but you do wrong anyway. And you do that. I didn't do that. I won't like my brother. And you did this for him? You know, kind of go back to those, those workers that got mad because the Lord gave everybody, the owner gave everybody a penny. We were working all day. And you get, we should give up. No, I promise you a penny. But what else this young man feels? He felt entitled. This is the attitude of the millennium. They feel the time. You owe me this. You know, I done put up with this all these years. Oh, my. Maybe he was 14, 15 years old. I don't know. But you know what? So I expect this. That's, that's what our kids are growing up in. You ain't worked for nothing. You ain't sacri seen sacrifices or nothing. 
that your parents have. But you owe me. I ain't believing you ain't giving it to me yet. You're not a good parent. Mm. You know, there's a time it used to be an old, and they're still around. AT&T used to have a slogan, reach out and that's what needs to happen. Amen. So we see here that he was possession blind. This is mine. How dare you let that little loser back on this property? The little, we had said, I mean, Pastor, we had talked about this word the other day. It's a, a little scallywag. <laughs> I, about, I about already cut a laugh the other day when he said that. I said, yeah, that, that brings back. I mean, that's not a good place to be. But that's what he thought of his brother. You know, get down here. Wait a minute. How disrespectful. I'm surprised he, boy, if he said that to me. Would have had a pastor here tonight preach to you. <laughs> Look at verse 30. But as soon as this, thy son, he ain't my brother right now. It's just your son. Look what your son done to you. <laughs> as soon as thy son, man, mama would have been still smacking me. I'm going to tell you about my son here. Then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to you, son. But here we go. But as soon as thy, this, thy son was come, which had devoured. Look, you don't need to talk to your parents that way. His daddy knew what had happened. But it's a respect issue, isn't it? Listen, folk don't have respect for your parents. I care what you say. The Bible says honor your mother and father. It didn't say whether they deserve it or not. You have a responsibility too. Go ahead, Pastor Holder. You tell them the truth anyhow. Amen. Amen. But they don't want to hear that. Get up here big enough now to eat a piece of cornbread without getting choked. They want to tell you everything you've done wrong. Thank you. I'm so glad you're looking over my shoulder. You know all my mistakes. He felt like, hey, you know what? He was possession blind. And you know, when all we can see is things, they get in the way. You can't see the real love of his father's heart. Listen, I'm trying to show you I love my son and you too. But you know what the same way? You know, like I said, we go to church, we do all this, but you know, Joe across the street, Joe ain't here, so I can use his name. <laughs> I'm not talking about Joe. But Joe go across the street, don't ever dock in the door, and they always get blessed. That's the same attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Possession. Possession blind. But what did the father say to the son, verse 31? And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. All that I have is <clears throat> You know, sometimes we have to have that same reminder. But then that ain't enough. That's what basically what Nathan said today concerning Uriah. You know, we're not going to read that tonight because of time. But here, David was the king. Had everything he wanted. But he when you find yourself that way, listen, we have lots and lots of things. Maybe we didn't work for them. Maybe they've been blessed by us. But we need to be thankful. And when someone else is doing well, be thankful. Don't hold back. Don't, don't let that chair of Thanksgiving go empty because you can't be happy for them. Plenty of people miss this share of happiness, not because they haven't found it, because they haven't stopped to enjoy. He could have asked his father, you know what? He had all the flock. He said, Dad, you know, it would be all right if I go ahead and have one of these with my friends. Don't you know his dad would have said yes? Sir. But he didn't do that. No, he wanted, oh, you better give me what you gave him. Listen, there is no guarantee that uh, what I did for one, I'm going to do for another. But well, I seen you do that for Harold and Rachel. Oh, did you? Well, just because you don't know what Harold and Rachel was like now, do you? <laughs> no, I bet you. You know, just because somebody did this for you or didn't do such and such, again, learn to appreciate what you have. How many times, how many things do we have packed away? Ain't using them. Boy, my wife taught me a lesson. Man, we had. We had some gold and nickel. And we had got in the wedding gift. 
And you know what? We eat out of them bad boys most days. Why well, don't we want to pack this away? Just so we can say, well, yo, look at that. I've got some gold in this. Somebody told me to But I tell you what, enjoy the things you have, then you won't have all this animosity to someone else. You know, go back in the back part of your closet. Pull out some of them clothes you ain't, if you can still wear them. That you ain't wore in a while. You know, do some things. I'm not saying that, you know, just because I'm skinny men. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I give my mother-in-law such a hard time. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. But look, plenty of people miss out. Here's another disturbing story. Uh, Pyrrhus, who was intended to go to war against Rome, uh, Cinema said, Sir, when you conquer them, what will you do next? Sicily is near at hand, we easily master. And when you have conquered Sicily, then we will pass on to Africa and take Carthage. And then uh, when, when these are conquered, what will be your next attempt? Then we will fall upon Greece and Macedon and, and recover what we've lost there. Well, then all is subdued. What fruit do you expect from your victory? Oh, then we'll sit down and enjoy ourselves. Sir, may we not do this now and forego all these preliminaries? Mm -hmm. The point is, enjoy what you have now. This young man, he could have had, his dad, his dad had them given him that. The younger brother learned the true riches out of his poor decisions, which brought poverty. He really did learn a lesson. There's no account of this older brother repenting or learning any lesson. What was it with this son? He was relationally distant. As we saw in verse 30, he described his brother as this son, and we talked about that. He, he did not even acknowledge him as his brother. He was motivated out of resentment and arrogance. Father had to remind him in verse 31, son, you're always with me. Again, so many times we have to God is always with me. He took for granted, didn't he? That's what we do. Listen, that person you set beside, we take for granted. Well, he's always going to be here. But she always gonna be here. Not so. You know, here the brother had already gone. Little cookie. But we we're so that's why there's so much thanklessness. We take for granted the things we have. Listen, when a doctor tells you get your affairs in order because you're gonna die, puts a different spin on things, don't you? And I said, sir, we all. I said, we all do. It's not a one sentence. We don't get out of this thing alive unless the Lord decides to come back and wrap it up. He took for granted. Lived on his father's throne. But failed to learn his father's heart. His father was a picture of our Lord and Savior, God. We've done a lot of things. We've made a lot, and we ain't done. It's bad in this way. Hey, that's the best thing. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be cruel. But we do. And we take for granted. And we haven't learned God's heart. The town drunk gets saved. People get mad. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's living for God now. Oh, I can remember when he did this. And I can remember when he did that. But you know what? He can remember a few things when he won't drunk about you, Brad. <laughs> he could not understand his father's nature. He could not understand and share in his father's joy. You know what? When we get right, when we turn our lives around, Jesus gets happy. Amen. We can't understand that. I don't know. You know, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't understand how in the world could God be merciful to me, a sinner, and to you, who we can be so stiff-necked and hard-hearted and all the above. 
But yet, the moment that we turn to him, it's all forgiven. As far as the east is from the west, amen, that's good eating. I don't care what you say. That's right. He could not understand his father's nature. He could not share in his father's joy. The father ends this discussion with these words in verse 32. It was me. We should make merry. And we got it. This brother was dead. We, we wrote him off. And is alive again. Lost. Sharing the joy of the Father's heart. Something. Again, Thanksgiving. Be a good year. Let's look back at the circumstances that involve this and two other stories. But the prodigal, again, like people, are like people that talk to Jesus. They're drawn to the Savior because they're really thankful. He had learned a thing or two. But in arrogance, the other brother are like people that find <coughs> this very offensive. How dare How could someone be so rude to come to Jesus? My Savior. Ooh. They have no room because they keep it. Don't let ingratitude rob you of your chance to get in sin. Somebody's done you wrong. I guarantee it. It's hard. How dare them try to weasel their way back in? And I agree, sometimes it is just like that. Don't get me wrong, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. Yes, there are consequences for action. But without true repentance, but again, it's hard to forgive them. Here's the situation. How self-righteous was that young man? <clears throat> so as we get ready to go into this area of Thanksgiving, each and every day should be things. Let us not take for granted the things we have. Let us look around and be thankful for the many blessings God has given us. We don't need to worry about something. We just need to be thankful. This 60 years is almost one year more than 59. Yeah. Just want to say that to you. Because we can be just like this. So when you say it once was lost, now they're found. Be happy for it. Pray for it. Let's go. somebody you might not forgive you might hurt that person you hurt yourself you're never going to move forward you walk with God you can't let go God always open to you to forward and make this lesson on something off your mind is there somebody or something a circumstance you let them all in your mind and say well here it is I can't go any further Son, his brother, for each of us tonight, we have room for improvement. And Lord, we can be so ungrateful. We just think that we're the catch me out. And 
We're just as wicked as we can be. God help us to Jesus. Let's all stand for our feet. The altar's open at any time. There's somebody who you need to forgive. Never move forward. You need to go.